you don't need your family, but I do. When I tell you I cried, I actually cried. I cried. I re- My heart skipped a beat and I cried. Yeah, little doggy, I cried. I cried for you because I don't know when he said that it was just painful. This, this is, there are so many families like this dysfunctional as heck. Whew. And then we have the sister of Doug trying to give Rachel some warning signs. It's like, he will use you. Will Rachel, listen, <laughs> let's find out. It's time for love after luck up, baby. Rachel and Doug. Mm-mm-mm. Dog and Dougie out of this environment and let's just go back home. I just want peace. You shouldn't have been here in the first place. You just want peace. You cannot get peace when your parole officer or agreement states be home on the weekends. And Doug is like, bump that. I'm not going to do that. And from everything that I've seen, it's like he's not even feeling or getting any repercussions for that, which is wild and crazy. Not at all. We're gonna see. Love is not changing. Why is she saying it like that? I just want peace and love. <laughs> Rachel is not even sure of this marriage, you know. Rachel is not even sure of Doug, you know. The way he's been acting, she's not sure of this situation. He lies to her already. And Sneaky remark in there. So, Give it a little Rosie. while. Rachel, you see, you see the Royal Junior. You gotta keep Douglas away from Kalamazoo. She's like, okay. Okay, okay. I got it. Uh, I'll, I'll keep little doggy away, uh, away from him or whatever the heck the sister was saying. The way Rachel is looking, like she's getting vital advice that she needs to, I don't know, detonate her imaginary you know what that's about to, you know, boom, bam. He's gonna, he's gonna cheat on you. He's gonna do something stupid. Hey. Because he's gonna bring you down. What do you mean? Make you lose everything. How? You sure? Yes, put the scary music because it's about to get real scary. He's a dog. Junior's a dog. Don't worry. Like last time, two months, he'll be back. Shut up. They've seen a lot. They don't trust the situation. Rachel should know what's about to happen. I know. Get me too. I Give know. me 60 days. I know. And then her guy, who is probably her man, says something, but I don't know what they said. They didn't mic him up or whatever the heck the thing was. I would have loved to see what brother-in-law had to say about those situations. Okay. He was like, look at him. Is he guys, you'll be back in prison. I would have loved to hear what he had to say. Dude, stand, stand. I hate you. Give him a chance. How many chances have you seen? You've sat there. You've witnessed the fact that mm-mm, mm-mm, this son of mine lost case. Where is the kind positive dad that I thought I had? Little doggy cried from the time they left the dad's house, the granddad's house, to the time they got to Rachel's house. How can you do this? How can you do this to kids? And he's so articulate. Uh, he is. He is. <laughs> Rachel, stop lying. Stop lying. Doggy. I I didn't know you yelled at your own family. You said you don't need them. I don't. I don't need them, son. But I, I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> no, I'm, I have her for Dougie. And then nobody knew what to say. That's the part that made my heart skip a beat. When I tell you I cried, I actually did cry. <laughs> I actually cried. Because I wasn't expecting little Dougie to say that. He's acting more grown than Dougie Dougie over here. You know? He probably knew his family was dysfunctional, but Dougie come, Doug coming back home showed really how dysfunctional it is because he just comes and starts screaming at everybody and then leaves. Nice me and y'all, I had to cuss you out, I cussed you out. I forgot to cuss you out, but I'll come back and you'll get the, the brunt of it. Like, that's all he did. That was not a nice meeting. That was not a good catch up, a good coming together of a family. It was terrible. It was... Imagine how little Dougie had imagined this moment of all of them being together, having the auntie who is vocal enough to say this other auntie didn't treat me right when you were gone, when I was in her care, she didn't treat me right. And auntie with pink hair over here is going to tell 
everybody. And my dad, who hasn't been in my life for over a decade, is going to be the one to say, hey, what did you do to my kid? But nothing of the sort happened. Doug came over, Doug came over there and was like, so? He was probably a troublemaker. He was probably this. He probably needed that, that talking to. And I wasn't there. And she was. So, screw it. That's what he was going to get. And I don't really care. I don't care whatever trauma he, he went through. I don't need to know. I don't care and I don't need to know. And we're just going to move on. And imagine little doggy thinking, little doggy thinking, wow. So no vindication for me. So my whole life is just what? No dad, he comes back and then still nothing. Like what, what, what is he gaining here? And his friends that are all in whatever, they all have dads and everything is kumbaya to go fishing, footballing and whatnot. They taught him them how to ride the bicycle and everything. And he missed out on that. Now he's back. You're old enough to be able to have conversations and relate to him in a different level. You're going into your teens to manhood. He could be there. He could be guiding you, helping you, but come to find out he's a kid himself. This one really, yeah, it got to me. I felt so bad for him, for little Dougie. I really did. It's never ending and unconditional. In any case, then at some point, his, the, 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 what do you call it? The electricity goes out in this very fancy, fancy neighborhood that Rachel lives in. So he's outside of the, uh, of the, that house, hooked up to the car or whatever to give his uncle monitor some, um, some uh, power now watch it is hi this is doug doug's who it says doug's a who is he so what his pro officer you mean i mean is the same guy that he called was it a few hours back saying or is this the next day i don't even know saying yo i'm about to do this thing it's illegal it's not what we discussed i'm gonna go to my dad's house even though it's the weekend and i'm not supposed to go anywhere um, since you're not picking up the phone, oh well, hey ho, I'm still gonna go, uh, peace out, deuces, and he went, and then the same parole officer, or whoever the heck, even if it's somebody else, they should have got that message, pass it on to everybody, and be like, ah, he broke the law, he broke the law, he broke all the rules, whatever, and let's get him back in here, or let's give him a warning, or, so no consequences, none, he can just do these things, wow, if that's the case, he really runs the show. And he's always been able to get away with things, and that's why he doesn't care. Yeah. The power's blown, but I got me, I'm hooked up in the car. I went and got a power thing. And I the You're free to swear at your parole officer. This is what I'm saying. He has pushed the boundaries so far that now he can do anything and everything around anybody and everybody. Plus neighborhood, the power service. I'm loud. I'm aggressive nature. Mm -hmm. That's the way I was brought up. But the cycle has to change. You know, I tell, hear him tell me off yesterday. Right, but he's angry. Nah, absolute, absolutely never. A 12 year old cannot say F off. It's impossible. To his dad, nah. What we're not about to do is give these children free passes whilst the parents have to censor themselves. That's what we're not about to do. Don't you guys think that's crazy? So little doggy can say, F off or F you or whatever. And we're just supposed to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's hurt. He's sad. He's, he wants frustrated. He's upset. And then when it comes to parents, he's like, oh, um, flipper do you that? Oh, oh, oopsie daisy. Like, uh uh. For me, me personally, leave all that vocabulary out of everything. Okay? Whether you're adult, whether you're young, whatever. Okay? That's the best way. But if anybody's going to do it, it shouldn't be the kid. That's for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. But that makes it right. I was angry, too. I'm not saying it's right. I was angry, and I went to prison. He likes being he likes being so intimidating. He does these things. What he just did, it's all part of the intimidation and being domineering. Obviously, he's got his big stature and everything to help him with that. But when you're this big, you don't need to talk to somebody and be like, you don't need to do all that. Like, I'm watching his body language, and it's always very, like, I'm bigger than you. I'm taller than you. You can't tell me what to do. Like. Does that make it right? I get mad? Do I go punch your neighbor? Does that make it right? No, but you can still listen to me when you come. You can't listen when he tells you to off. 
when this is kind of very true i agree with that the kids should never say these things but the kid is very hurt you guys first out the gate y'all should have rolled into family therapy like this this was never gonna be yeah no certain things doug needs to really acknowledge like the fact that the sister didn't take care of him well he needs to hear those stories and be like oh my gosh yeah yeah you're right that was terrible and i'll be like mm -hmm, whatever explore family therapy because what's currently going on clearly isn't working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you know it's done for me they had me go see a psych in third grade so they went to they gave him a psych a psych in third grade and guess what happened i psyched the psych out she sent me to her supervisor i psyched her out and she discharged me sent me back home to my mom <laughs> Put a bottle of Ritalin that I never took. I don't need. You see how <laughs> you see how Rachel is swallowing. She's like, mm -hmm. I'm with a psychopath, aren't I? Yeah. And they gave me a bottle of Ritalin that I never took. Like it's as if all these people have taken acting classes. What's with all the weird facial expressions? All the weird bombustors. That is not a word. I don't think. Um, like gestures and body movements and what i did i needed attention i needed i was loved i wasn't watched that right there is a line that right there is a line doug doug listen to me hello if you ever hear this <laughs> doug write a book called i was loved i wasn't watched that is an amazing book title. And if anybody steals it from this video right here, I want my cut. In any case, that would be amazing. See, this is how these type of people can turn their life around. You think if these people would start writing books, people wouldn't buy it? Heck, I would like to read it. To really read and see what really went down. All the stories and stuff like that. But communicate differently or get out. Period. Who are you talking to? You. You. The, the man who thinks he can sit there with his no job having self and just enjoy life. No. You can't expect me to wake up and just be a different person. But you can be normal acting. That's, that's the, that's all, that's all people are asking. I think this discussion is over. Then she cuts it short. I don't know why they haven't resolved anything. The family therapy, are they going to go? Are they not going to go? Ain't nobody know. And this is the stuff that I don't like. This is this is lack of communication. You do this and then, okay, so what did we resolve here? Nothing. Anyway, I'm tired. I'm just about tired. I, I became sad again because a little doggy. And now I gotta go. In any case, if you're not already part of the family, make sure you hit thumbs down, press on that subscribe button. Comment because I really want to know anything. Like because you obviously like this video and hit the notification bell. Watch it. I'll see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. Daily ish videos up in here in the meantime. Make time for glorious lifetime. So what? Let me try it. God bless. Also, the next video will not be tomorrow to be in a few hours time. So yay. Okay, bye.